This was where I wanted to begin. A society that values its children must cherish its parents. I think we're often angry with the parents. It didn't do me any good to be angry with them. And if you have read my introduction to raising parents, you, you saw me describe my process of becoming less angry and in fact quite tender toward the difficulties that parents who do not raise their children adequately experience. I would note that children rarely live better than their parents. Foster care is the attempt to give them a better life. It doesn't usually work out that way. We add to the array of problems that they have. So the implication is help the parents to live better lives and their children will benefit. Right now I'm thinking very locally in the UK Right now, today, this year, parents are the only resource that isn't being cut back. Everything else is down the drain in this country. You know, I travel a lot, and the recession didn't hit social services, the kind of work we do in 2008, not even 2009. 2010, I didn't quite feel it. 2011, it was apparent. And of course, this year is a disaster. And my traveling would say the UK is the worst off. You have had the greatest cutback in funds that are available to troubled families of any country I've been in. I'm not doing research on this. I'm just telling you I feel it here. Parents are the only resource who are absolutely committed to each specific child. And that's always been the case. I've often used the example, put together in your own mind a multidisciplinary committee of the very best professionals you know of. Stack this committee with your favorites. Would you give them your child to manage? I wouldn't, because they come and they go. They go at 5 o'clock every day, and they go in and out of these jobs. The only people committed for the long haul are parents, even very troubled parents. I would tell you that in hard times, we can't afford to lose this resource. So my talk is organized around how to make the best of a troubled resource. And I don't minimize the problems that parents bring us. Um, what I've learned? Um, they were themselves endangered children. And endangered children are not seen by their parents as themselves. Instead, they have to warp their development to meet their parents' needs. They have to go around a gap in their parents' development. They have to fill a hole, but they don't get to grow straight and strong because of what they had to do to accommodate their parents. And by the time they're grown up, they're this crooked tree that has had to warp itself, and now it too will have children. I think that to help endangering parents, those who endanger their children, we need to imagine them as they intend to be and value them even as they are. So my golden rule of protecting children is do unto parents as you would have them do unto their children. And if you think about the processes that we use in child protection, I think we do not usually act with parents the way we want them to act with their children. We use much stronger, more punitive, more directive approaches than we would want them to use with their children. We listen less to them than we want them to listen to their children. And I would argue we are the example 
Uh, we don't say learn from us, but people always learn from what they experience. Do unto parents as you would have them do unto their children. 